Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 41 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have a pretty complex project for today. Uh, there's a lot of things I'd like to get done throughout the series. One of them is um, making better food. I've been eating steak for a while, and potatoes, and wheat, and bread, and toast, and some of this has been pretty good, and some of it's been pretty blah. And, you know, poor Steve here, he's getting a little bit hungry. He's tired of bread and toast. He would like better things. Uh, in addition, there's several mods that add resources that can be powered by food. One of them is Batania. There's a flower that eats food, and the better the food, the better um, mana you get out of it. Also, Extra Utilities has a generator called the Culinary Generator, which can produce RF based off of food. Uh, so, with that in mind, I flipped through our old friend Pam's Harvest Craft and decided to pick out a good source of food, and one of them is Beef Wellington. This is a pretty nice food source, uh, in my opinion, because a, it's very easy to automate because there's very few steps involved in making it. And B, look how much food you get out of it. It's a huge amount of resources. Um, so to make this, we either need to get ourselves some raw beef or raw tofu steak. Uh, now, tofu steak requires a lot of steps. But if we were to automate beef, we would be in much better shape. Um, in addition, we would just need some spinach, mushrooms, and dough. Mushrooms, uh, we can get white mushrooms, which is a Pam's Harvest Craft mod uh, food source. And spinach is another part of Pam's. And dough is pretty easy to make. You just need salt, flour, a mixing bowl, and water. Um, and salt, you get from water. So at the end of the day, the following resources are what we need. Beef, white mushroom, spinach, and wheat. Like, that's it. Four resources. And then water, obviously. But, I mean, water is easy, right? We've already got water going on. So, keeping all this in mind, in the back of our head, I said to myself, let's go ahead and automate this. It sounds like fun. So a couple things are going to be required. Uh, first off, I'm probably going to do something about this greenhouse. I'll probably knock down a lot of the plants that we have in there. And uh, we definitely want to do um, some automation. Right now our automation is focused around the canola seeds and the ender pearls, right? We have a good amount of those, right? We have a really good amount of them. We have 21 stacks of ender pearls, which is nice. I ain't complaining. But we're going to need more. So we want to keep that running. Um, we've also got, you know, a little bit of wood going on here. But we haven't really done much with that in a while. And then the other resource we have, obviously, is canola. Now, this side of the farm, which I said I would eventually upgrade and automate, uh, isn't doing much of anything. So why don't I clear this out? I mean, it's doing stuff, right? But it's not automated. I would come in here every now and then and harvest these plants and do stuff with them and, you know, it's worked out well enough. Uh, I might even have some extra worms hanging around, which would be nice. Yeah, I do. Nice. That's cool. Um, let's get this thing set up and automated rather easily. Um, instead of going the route of, hey, let's make ourselves wooden resources to, to harvest, let's go and make something really special. Um, I'm going to pop into here and I'm going to get some paper. Um, good, I've got a decent amount. Check this out, guys. Here's a neat little trick that I picked up a while back. Uh, if we were to get, we don't have any of our stuff out. Stencil table, part builder, blank stencils. That's probably good. Um, you know, we've got a crazy amount of stuff going on here. Let's get some dirt. I don't think this infinite water source needs to be here anymore. So we'll just set these guys back up. Um, and then our pattern chest, obviously. I'll probably move you to here. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, so I'd like a tool rod pattern. Uh, I think I need to have my crafting station on the end here to make this whole thing. Yeah, everything can see each other now. Beautiful. Uh, so we want a tool rod for sure. And we want that made out of paper. Uh, we're also going to want a shovel head made out of paper. And then I don't see one, but I would like an axe head. You guessed it, made out of paper. Cool. Um, and with all that cooking, we can make ourselves one of these guys, a Matic. 
Hooray! It's a papermatic with writable too. Making tool materials out of paper gives you the writable upgrade, um, and writable gives you more modifiers. We've now got the option to place five modifiers on this matic. Awesome. Um, now the other thing I'd like to get is some gold. Let's get some gold. And I don't know exactly how much I need, but I would probably want to increase the size of this smeltery. This was always kind of just like a temporary setup that I never really did much more with. And I really should. I should really make this thing a little better. Um, at some point, maybe. We'll see. Uh, gold luckily melts down pretty easily. Uh, we get two ingots worth, makes us a cast. Cool. Now a blank cast, surrounded by obsidian. gives you this nifty gadget, which is an object that gives you reinforced. Each level adds 20% chance to not lose durability when the tool is used. We've got five upgrades times 20% yields 100%, which means that if we put five reinforcement upgrades on this thing, which is exactly how many upgrade slots we have, uh, we can totally have an unbreakable tool. And that's the goal. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll do this again. And you can keep melting gold for me. Um, I might have a hopper in here still. I totally do. Awesome. So that's two. I'm probably going to need like six more of you. So I'll just let those hopper in so I don't miss the opportunity. Get ourselves another cast. And make this dude. Cool. So that is reinforced three. These guys have melted down again, which is cool. Luckily gold melts pretty quickly. Otherwise I would have probably expanded my smeltery out of impatience. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. And that's the last one we need. So we make another one of these dudes, and suddenly we've got an unbreakable pick slash, well, matic. And, and the cool thing about the matic is it works as both an axe and as a hoe. So putting this in the farming station pretty much lasts forever. How cool is that? Um, so what I'm going to do is go down here and I'm going to disable all the crazy automation that we have that is responsible for making this thing do what it does. So let's um, basically just break you. Um, you can go away. Uh, that's cool, right? So you are set. Insert, extract. Right, um, I don't even need it to be ex insert, right? It just needs to extract on brown or, or on green, and you uh, can be insert only on green. Cool, so that's all this thing needs to do now is just pull items out of here. And this will run forever, like it's unbreakable 100%, never breaks, never lose it, works forever. It's great. Um, so if I were to get my sigil of the green grove here, for example, to demonstrate, and we sped up this plant processing, check this out. He's gonna harvest, no durability lost, right? Pretty cool. Durability is six out of six. So this paper matic has six durability, but it's unbreakable, so it's gonna last forever. How cool is that? All right, so I'm gonna go make another one of these off camera, uh, and then we will be back because I wanna have another farming station set up over here, um, and we'll take care of that as well. So we will be back in just a moment. All right, so here are some things I need. First, I need white, mushroom spores which look like that little white dot so if you flip through your market you should be able to find this somewhere nearby that looks like it cool so for one emerald we can have a white mushroom spore beautiful the next thing we're obviously going to want is spinach and that is a light green seed so these are a little bit trickier to find obviously soybean which is a nice seed for sure Soybean seems a little bit nerfed in the later versions because you need other stuff to make it replaceable. 
uh, scallion, zucchini, broccoli. There's lots of seeds in case you uh, hadn't figured that out yet. Okra, let's go past the white mushroom spore and see. Rice, sweet potato, leek. It doesn't look like they're in any kind of order, so you just kind of have to get a little bit lucky. Rye, these are all vanilla seeds, so maybe we go back a little bit again. Celery, water chestnut, bamboo, okra, Brussels sprout, asparagus. Come on, spinach, where are you? Lettuce. Like I said, <laughs> there's a lot of seeds. Uh, Pam has added quite a few plants to her mod. Cucumber, corn, cabbage, spinach. Hey, there we go. Nice. Okay, bye. Spinach seed. Cool. Um, so I've got my Social the Green Grove. I also have a watering can. Uh, I'm hoping between the two of these we can make a good amount of progress growing some stuff. Um, what I'll probably want is some bone meal just to get started. And the reason I want this is as follows. It's going to be a lot faster to get a basis of seeds. Um, and I'll show you why. So let's see. This should really quickly be making a bunch of bone meal for me, which is cool. I'll at least get a little bit more. A dozen seems like a good start, right? So out here, I've got my worms. Let's get ready to put these in a nice, efficient kind of pattern, right? We'll do that-ish. That should be pretty good, right? Um, my farming station can go here, okay? The worms will take care of doing the wormly things that they do. Um, and you're gonna get this dude. We're gonna have underground here I probably wanna tap into. So let's get under there a little bit. Cool. So get rid of that water source block so that we can get our item conduits down here. And these will eventually feed over to this thing which we'll set up with drawers which I made ahead of time for all the stuff we want. Um, now you're going to need power, but I'm not going to give you any yet because I don't want you messing with the auto, with the manual work I'm about to do. So here we're just going to set up, just hold right click and you'll get lots. Cool. I just got 14 white mushrooms. Boom. Not bad. Um, we'll get some more bone meal and let's do spinach, right? So we'll do that over here. Hold right click, and we just got 35 spinach seeds. Nice. A few more white mushroom seeds just to balance it out. So that's plenty, right? Once you've gotten one seed, you can easily get many more. Um, so let's see, south, so that's northeast, will be spinach seeds, lock it down. And that would be northwest, will be mushroom seeds, lock it down. And then we're going to want regular seeds. And uh, I guess we'll do those here, east, southeast, right? Yeah. And uh, that's pretty cool. OK. So with that in mind, uh, let's get this guy power. So what I'm going to do is get him a conduit. Because remember, these will connect. Maybe one more conduit. This will make sure that it feeds power pretty rapidly into the thing. Um, what I'm going to do is place in here one of these dudes. And he'll feed power to all three tiles. So it'll feed it to the farming station directly. And he'll feed it to the energy conduits here. And if we pop upstairs, we should see planting occurring. Nice. Now why'd you put spinach crops in there for? Oh, probably because you weren't locked. So we'll just break you and we're cool. Right. Um, so you currently have no seeds. That's OK. You don't know what to do with this corner. I haven't figured out what to do with that corner yet. Um, now I just need you um, to pipe those items somewhere. Right. So we're going to be getting. Let's get a few of the resources we're going to be getting. We're probably going to be getting seeds out of it, but I don't think we'll get the seeds from the Pam's stuff. So I think actually I can just. Nice. This works too. All right. I didn't even need bone meal. How cool is that? I forgot that this had a right click function. Neat, huh? So those are the four types of items that we'll be getting from this farm. 
Um, so let's add them to the drawer system over here, right? Um, we can have here will be the mushrooms, here will be the spinach, seeds and wheat. Cool. Uh, and let's get our key. Let's activate this for a minute because I want him to get a bunch of uh, resources. I want him to be ready to feed those items into the drawers and make sure that they're working correctly. So currently we've got five wheat, 20 mushrooms and 16 spinach. All right, I just want to test to make sure that this is feeding properly into this dude. I might need more item conduits. You not know how to make item conduits? You are a terrible crafting system, Direwolf. Why did you do such a bad job? Where's my teleporter, by the way? Oh, there it was. Uh, conduits. Let's teach it real quick, because we're here and we want them. Item conduits, please. Uh, now I can request 30 of you. Missing pulsating iron nugget, right. Uh, you know how to make those, I think? You just don't know how to make the nugget version. Good to go. Nice. Good to see everybody crafting their heart out. All right, so over here, is it getting darkish? Let's come back after nighttime. All right, my conduits are being crafted, but hopefully I have enough to get us going. Um, I think I could probably just drill right through here, couldn't I? Cool. And then we just set this dude to always active extract mode and you should have no problem extracting these guys into the barrels. Okay, we can uh, close everything up now. And you've got 24, 30, and 8. Which means everything went in there. Which means we're cool. Also, we have access to our white mushrooms. Nice. And our spinach because we have an external storage bus down here. Remember? Cool. So, things are good. Now we need to automate these guys, which is going to be a little bit more of a trick. Let's get to work. All right, guys. Uh, the next thing we're going to work towards is automating the cows. Uh, we want to get large amounts of beef, and we want to automate it, right? Right now, we've got a system set up where we have lots of cows showing up. Um, but I'd like to make it so that we can continuously breed these cows and then the offspring grow up really fast and start making beef. So yeah, those of you who are against cruelty to animals, look away, because this is not going to be pretty. But it's going to be a good system and it's going to be totally automated. That's the plan at least. Um, so what I'm going to set up um, is the following. We've got this little area ready to roll right um inside here right the this area is in if i'm being fair doesn't actually need to be here that's not what i meant to hit hotkeys for the lose direwolf um i wanted to get a wand if i had one Nice. Um, I just realized that I extended this in such a way that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because there's fences above this floor. So let's do this. Let's um, get more brick. One, two. That's cool. Um, and this actually is also... No lock. There we go. That's what we want. Nice. Cool. And then we can put our torches back to kind of keep things well lit in here. We'll kind of do that. 
So this one to here, this one, and this one. And I wouldn't mind quieting these guys down. So part of me would like a sound muffler. Would that be too much to ask? Definitely not. <sighs> the sounds of silence. So beautiful. Thank you, sound muffler. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. All right, so what's going to happen is we're going to set up a system where the animals uh, will breed and the offspring will fall through the floor. Um, and then we're going to catch them on these nifty little gadgets called vector plates. Uh, I don't think I've played with vector plates yet in the Let's Play series. They're from a mod called Dark Utilities. Um, they can push mobs around, which is great. All you need is a slime ball, some sugar, and some stone. We've got a decent amount of that. Um, so there's several tiers of these that I want to demonstrate to you right now. Um, and I'll show you which one we're going to use and why in a moment. But I would just want you to know the difference. So vector plates are cool. Uh, number one, mobs can spawn on them. So if you want to use them for a mob trap, hintity hint hint, it's a great way to do it. Basically, um, they push entities along. Player entities, uh, animals as you can guess, items, sure, you name it, they get pushed. As long as the player is not holding shift. If you hold shift, you're not being pushed. Uh, monsters and entities and other mobs don't usually hold shift, so you're pretty much in good shape. Um, the next tier of this is the yellow tier, which is the fast vector plate. Moves you a little bit quicker. Neat. And then the final tier, as you could probably guess, is an even faster version of the vector plate called the extreme vector plate, which is a little extreme. I won't lie. Whoosh! It's very fast. Uh, I'm probably going to go with the, the tier 2 one, uh, the yellow one. It seems to me like tier 1 is definitely like, slow, and tier 3 is definitely fast, uh, which is perfect, uh, because it makes tier 2 really useful. Okay, so uh, nap time. Let's go inside. So what I think I'd like to do, right, so the animals will fall here. Uh, let's mark out where the edge of the animals might fall is. That'll be here. This is like the last point from which animals might fall, right? So what I'm gonna do is set it up so that our vector plates are kind of facing this direction. Remember, holding shift prevents you from being affected by this, okay? Um, and then these vector plates will go like this, okay? And then we will have vector plates here. Nice. Holding shift makes this a lot easier of a process. What we'll do is we'll have something like this, and then we'll have uh, some bricks here kind of deal. Okay, so the animals will fall through the floor, they'll hit the vector plates, they'll get pushed along in this direction. I'm clearly going to need at least a few more vector plates, and I think my limiting factor at this point was sugar. Totally missing sugar cane. I really need to add sugarcane to a farm somewhere. Maybe I'll add it to that fourth slot in the farm. I mean, for now, this is working, obviously. But it's not an ideal situation, to be fair. So vector plates, let's get a few more of these. That'll be good. Turn them into the fast version, right? And then what we'll do is set these up. So right here and right here. These vector plates are awesome. They're super fun to build and use. Um, what I'd like to do then is, let's get some more brick. So brick, stone. By the way, remember that I have a sound muffler up there, so we're not hearing because of the sound muffler when I'm placing those blocks or breaking those. Uh, I want these to fall into an area here, um, and I'd like this area to be one, two, three blocks deep. 
Okay. Um, then what I want to do is get some ritual stones. Dun dun dun. dun. Um, sweet. Uh, the ritual I want to do is the Ritual of the Shepherd, which requires 16 runes in total. And from the Master Ritual Stone, we have to go two to each side. So I'm probably going to expand this area just a little bit. It needs to basically be a 5x5 five five area. Okay. Um, and you probably don't need to be there. So we'll put our Master Ritual Stone in the center here. And that's what the ritual looks like. Neat. Um, and then I can fill in the remaining sides with some kind of whatever. Okay. Uh, and let's even get our swapping wand here. So you swap. You guys. Stone. Brick. Trying to make this look a little bit nice, right? Not too terrible. Um, let's even do this. And one more set of brick. Put this nonsense away. Cool. So that looks good, right? I like that, actually. It looks really good to me. Now remember, mobs can spawn on vector plates, so don't be afraid to light them up. Just to be safe, I'm going to put torches here and here. I think that'll look good. Overall, that, that should be clear and safe. So now all we need is our weak activation crystal. And we should be good to go. Nice. Rush of energy flows to the ritual. The last thing we need to get for this uh, is the following. It's also from Dark Utilities. It's a pretty nice block. Uh, we've already seen a version of it in by way of the Mob Filter player. What I want is Mob Filter Baby. If we set these guys up, uh, I just need some gates. Hopefully I can swap wand these things. I might need a few more because what's the interior area of that? Uh, I think I need a few more of these. So let's make a few more gates. And we'll make a few more of you. Let's do 24 for now, and we'll see if we need more in a minute. Um, but if, if I'm right about this, I should be able to swap these without much of an issue, right? Cool, nice. I don't have the right block. I don't have the right block, really? I need that much of this stuff? Well, let's do this, okay, and let's do, yeah, I definitely need more of these. Let's do it in three by three mode. Cool, so we can at least do this. Yeah, we definitely need more of these. Um, I wasn't even close to an accurate number as to how many I needed. More gates. That might be close to enough. Thinking I'll need more, but we'll see. You there, you there, you there. I don't have the right block, so I just need a couple more. Couple more. Gate. That should be good. Mob filter. I'm actually surprised I have this many eggs. Why do I have so many eggs? I only have six more, but let's put this on one by one mode and that should be cool. So now baby animals will fall through the floor. Um, and that should be cool. That's pretty much what we want. They might be allowed to get caught on the edges, but they'll fall right through pretty quickly. So let's get some wheat. 
which we have 54 of. And check this out. We're going to drop this in here and watch what's going to happen. Okay. And we're going to watch this from down here as well. We're going to watch this from both areas. Actually, I think I've still got my 3x3 three three drill on. So let's just be a little bit careful so we can watch here. So these guys should start farming and look, boom. It's working. See what happens? Baby animals fall through, adult animals do not, right? So as soon as a baby is made, hello there. Whoop, hello, haha, <laughs> nice. And they fall right into this ritual area. And the ritual speeds up their growth. It reduces the time for a baby animal to grow from 20 real life minutes to three real life minutes. So if we come back in three minutes, we should see adult animals in this area. How cool is that? So I know you guys don't have any proof of this because we did a jump cut here, but um, it's only been three minutes. Um, it's, it's still the same day. We only have a few cows down here and look, they're growing. How cool is that? Uh, I filled in the walls, debating if I want the walls filled in or not. I haven't decided 100% what I want to do. Like if it looks good this way or if it looks good with, with the five by five area. But look, they're already growing um, very rapidly. So three minutes after these animals were born, they've been grown into fully adult animals and uh they are ready for a slaughtering um cool huh i like that i like it a lot to be honest with you um the only thing i would hazard to warn you guys about is this guy detects how many animals are nearby and whether or not um there's too many and if there's too many animals nearby it won't breed them because you don't want to have like a thousand entities in this area right so it stops itself i don't think it can see this area down here so it will keep breeding the ones up here and if you don't automatically kill the ones down here you will wind up with that 1000 entities thing so be careful about that um if you do set something like this up like on a server uh, but otherwise you should be pretty cool so we've done a good job setting this up and uh it's actually working quite well the animals are going where we want them to go uh and everybody's behaving like i said not a hundred percent sure what i want to do about this area here being five by five or what i want it to be but maybe i'll make it five by five still can't hurt too much. We might see what the range of the thing that we want to use to auto kill these animals is and then go from there. Um, but speaking of going from there, we're gonna have to Enderman. Dude, like where where did he even come from? It's noon. Why is there an Enderman teleporting around? What is happening right now? So we're gonna have to wrap up the episode. Look, I'm getting a little suspicious about these Endermen. I've done nothing but be nice to them. And they're just like, hey, we're gonna come investigate. Did I see another one right there? Was Did I see one just standing there a split second ago or was I imagining that? Anyway, wrapping up point, Dowel 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Next episode, we have several things to do. One, we need to automatically kill the adult animals down here. So we have to differentiate between babies and adults and kill only the adults. So that's going to be a trick. Two, we're going to need to autocraft beef wellington. So we've already got a significant portion of what we need. We're going to have the beef, we're going to have the spinach, we're going to have the mushrooms, and we're going to have the wheat. We just need to teach this, the, the, the RS system how to handle water, salt, and flour, but that's all going to be really easy, and you'll see that because we have a fluid system in here, we can auto craft very easily with fluids. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll be back next time to have Beef Wellington, and then we can use it for all kinds of awesome purposes. All right, guys, take it easy.